we're reviewing ideas that uh, students should bring with them to the pre-calculus class. The final thing that we'll look at um, is the, uh, the context, the word problem context in which exponential and logarithmic functions arise. So the, the most common example is a problem using um, compounded interest. This is the, the formula. Uh, sometimes you see this called the PERT formula, principal times e to the rate times time, where the idea is that you, um, you invest a certain amount um, over a certain time at a certain interest rate, and, um, and then this tells you the value of the investment um, over that period. Um, that's not really necessary to know for this problem, but we do want to make sure we understand when we say an initial investment or something initial, that typically means when t equals zero. So for example here, if I were to find out, if I were to plug zero in for t, I would find that my initial investment is 5,000 times e to the zero, which is, of course, e to the zero is one, so that's just $5,000. So this problem, we don't have to be all that clever about figuring out what the initial investment is, it just means the investment when time is zero. So if I'm trying to figure out at what time my investment triples, I'm really trying to find the value of t so that my investment has a value of $15,000. Now, if you were to play around with this, you would find that um, it really doesn't matter where you start paying attention to this. If you started thinking about it after four years of the investment, um, then whatever the value is at that time, it'll still, it'll still take the same amount of time for the investment to triple. So it's kind of a funny thing about exponential functions. But anyway, this is what we're trying to do for this problem. So that means I have the equation at 5,000 e to the 0.04t is equal to 15,000. And my goal is just to solve for t. So strategically, when we have an exponential equation, our goal is to first isolate the exponential term. So to do that here, I'm going to have to divide both sides by 5,000. If I do that, I'll have 0.04 t in the exponent and have that on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I'll just have 15,000 divided by 5,000. So I'll write 5k over here. Um, if I do that division, I'll get 3. So the amount of time it's going to take for this investment to triple is just whatever value of t makes e to the 0.04 t equal to 3. Um, now that I have my exponential term by itself, I can use logarithms, as we did before, to get rid of the exponentiation. So notice that I'm using the natural log here, um, mostly because the natural log is on every calculator, but it has the added advantage that the natural log is, has a base of e, and this guy has a base of e. So if these bases match, then they actually completely undo each other. The natural log and e to the x are inverses of each other. So on the left-hand side, the log and the e clear out, and all I have is 0.04t, and on the right-hand side, I have whatever log of 3 is. That's something I have to write in my calculator to figure out it's a little bit more than 1. And so the solution then, my value of t that I was looking for, is just the natural log of 3 divided by 0.04. In this case, you'll find that it's it'll take a while. At a 4% interest rate, it's going to take 20-some years for, your, for an investment to triple.